welcome you to today's Quadrivium Reconnaissance with Lynn and Lab. Today we will continue our conversation between the virtual world education community and our third conversation with Lynn and Labs today with Brett and Grumpity. Just love your name. Oh, thank you. Hi. It's Hi. a pleasure to be here. It's great to be here. The quadrivium is an ancient and noble tradition in education. To the ancient Greeks, it meant the four ways or a place where four roads met. The quadrivium combines space, time, harmony, and science to develop applied, critical, and creative approaches to modern issues that require innovative thinking, solutions, and practical mechanisms to our ever-changing world. BWBPE's quadrivium, I can say it three times in a row, <laughs> is more than just a networking event. It provides an opportunity to share and contribute to the scholarly pursuit of knowledge. And that's what we're doing today. It is the first step in understanding the complex nature of these issues leading towards a principal path for institutions, instructional designers, facilitators, and students alike. Oh, and I'm sorry, Carol, and I'll let you continue. First, let me introduce my dear friend and colleague and amazing chair of the BWBPE programs, and we've seen her success for the last few days, Lorraine Mockford, known to us as LV, who will be helping me today. She is mostly retired, and I'm so jealous of that phrase, instructional designer in Nova Scotia, Canada. LV is active in education and nonprofits throughout Second Life, both as an educator and transcriptionist, including her work with virtual ability. Thank you for your assistance today, LV. Let's give her a big hand. Yay. Thanks, everybody, and thank you, Becky. Oh, gosh, I just screwed up, I think. I oh, did. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, somebody's going <laughs> to. So now it's over. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyhow, I get, I, get to introduce, <laughs> I get to introduce my friend, Becky, and I've just wiped out what I was going to paste about you. But anyhow. <laughs> Uh, Becky Adams, or here in West Second Life, Ellie Pinion, is my partner in crime on, on the executive committee for VWBP, along with Phelan Cormel. Um, we also uh, spend a lot of time working on other sort of projects as we go along, and, it, and thank you so much for being my shoulder to lean on in the back channel, Becky. Also, uh, she is, uh, well, she doesn't say it, but she is also mostly retired from the University of New Mexico, where she was the director of online learning and education. And I know I've screwed that up, but because I wiped it out, I can't say it. Right. <laughs> um, <so. laughs> and she also teaches on, but thank you, Becky. Mostly I don't talk today. I just participate. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Ellie. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to introduce Brett and Grumpity. Oh, sure. Sorry. Um, yes, <laughs> That's okay. So... <laughs> We can all relax now. <laughs> Holy cow, yeah, I'm just totally screwed up. So we also have with us again for session number three with Linden Lab, Brett Linden and Grumpity Linden. And I will post in the chat in a second uh, their information, but um, we have uh, Brett is the VP of Marketing and Grumpity is the VP of Product. If you want to know a little bit more about them, here is 
are their bios from the website. There we go. And thank you. Thank you, LB. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Great to be here. And I have to say, you guys have done such an amazing job on this conference. I've gone to a few and I've watched some of the YouTube streams and uh, I can't imagine how much work it takes to pull this off, but you know, kudos to everybody. You guys have done great. Thank you so much, Brett. It does. It takes a huge village and a year or more, <laughs> but it, it all comes together. And it's kind of nice to giggle. So thank you, Elvie, for giving us an opportunity to do that. <laughs> I, I concur with Brett. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you. So, Brett and Grumpity, we are so glad to have you with us. Uh, and we've all been listening with the interest at the last two other conversations, first with Patch and Phelan, and the wonderful roundtable yesterday with both of you, as well as Patch and Midori. We remember the days when Linden Labs had a great relationship with the educational community. And we have really seen hope that we're returning to that. Thank you. You have repeatedly said over the past three days that you will want to make the community, you want to make the community happy. And we thank you for that. We want to work with you to achieve that as well. So today is a true quadrivium where we have our audience included, primarily in text, and LV will keep me on track with their comments and questions as I'm trying to watch them too. We would like to remind you, um, those in the audience, to please use a Q and colon for questions, uh, and that will help draw our eyes to that. And thank you again to our amazing transcriptionists. We are passionate educators and sometimes get frustrated because challenges can affect our students. But we are encouraged to hear the positive tone these last two conversations have had with the lab and the plans that will genuinely help us with our students and our classes and our courses. In that, I would like to encourage our wonderful audience today to stay positive around their passion as we hope this is just the beginning of these conversations and the feedback that we are going to have with the lab. We will have a place to get our concerns to you and we so appreciate that. So let's start our questions. Several themes came up in the last two days. I'm sure we will revisit many of them. However, just to jump in, in the deep end, safety and security for students is essential for us to be able to teach here. It looks like that you're going to be offering some turnkey learning spaces, improving on onboarding, and various other things. And these are all very important to us. But first, can you speak to how you are approaching helping our educational community deal with griefers? You've done a really good job helping our co conference deal with that, knocking on wood. But what about a single instructor who's out there by herself or his self? or an institution who's just trying to keep their students having a good learning experience? Are there tools? Are the tools coming? How can they inform themselves of what is out there? Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I, can, uh, I can take a uh, try here. Uh, so the first place I would definitely recommend is uh, the governance user group, uh, which is held monthly. Uh, this is the list of all our user groups, of course, and the governance user group is there. It is uh, every third Tuesday. Uh, it's led by Tommy Linden and Kristen Linden, and uh, they are the masters at um, solving governance issues and have <laughs> the best advice, really. Um, in addition to that, uh, if there are issues, uh, I think it. Um, that Midori's offer also stands. Um, so that if there are issues that you are finding, it's the regular support channel involved, um, then uh, talking to Midori uh, so she can collect uh, the types of problems that people are having 
standards for systematic that would be uh, lastly, uh, I would really hype uh, the Reg API program because this is the way that educators can really control who can and cannot access uh, their regions, uh, who can and cannot come in, uh, the groups that their students are in, and um, as much of the environment um, as is necessary to their needs. Uh, it's much harder to do so for an open event like this one where we want everybody to come. Uh, but for a class setting where you're teaching um, to a specific group, it's much easier to, to limit the access to them. Excellent. These are great suggestions. And we will talk a little bit more about how to get a hold of Midori and various other people as things, um, as time goes on today. Um, so, Grumpity, could you, many of us are technologists, but probably not everyone. Could you go into the Ridge API just a little bit more with some specifics as to how that works? Sure. So, Ridge API is literally an API that allows uh, the holder, you get a key. So, as an educator, you would be given a specific Ridge API key, uh, and you build a form that interfaces with our registration interface, uh, it, with our registration system. So accounts are created for form, um, and when they're created, uh, you can set certain things like the group that you want this account to be added to right off the bat, uh, the access that you want them to have. You can limit them to the estate um, that you own. Uh, and a few other controls as well. And then the, the um, estate that you have is only available to those groups or to those accounts. Uh, so you kind of insulate uh, the environment from outside griefing. Uh, and if you wanted to do this, for example, for, uh, for the university where you teach, uh, you could uh, require a login uh, from the university before somebody could create an account via Excellent. What do you guys think? <laughs> and I will mention as I'm watching the chat, um, we do have a couple of our larger educational institutions who here in Second Life who are taking advantage of that already. Um, and then we have some that are uh, trying to get some resources out there. So working closely with, with you guys, we can probably get the word out as to how to make that happen uh, and how to, who to get in touch with as they get that, those kinds of things set up. Um, they probably take a little bit more technology savvy than uh, some of our instructors have, but we have help out there and you guys do too, I believe. We do. Um, I mean, we don't build the turnkey login uh, pages or registration pages for you, um, right. but we can certainly hook you up, for example, with other educators who've already gone through the process. It's not super complex to build it out. Perfect. Thank you. And that really does address one of the, um, the main things that many of us have run into is that um, coming in with the rest of the world and and um, and not being able to to uh, help our our especially younger students be in the right place and only stay there. So awesome. There's a question here from Duncan Stewart. I'm just going to paste it back in the chat. Thank you. Um, so the system can query our campus uh, CAS, for example. I'm sorry, I don't follow. I'm not sure what you mean. Duncan, do you mean the 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 sign on for your for your college? Yes. No, no, uh, we we can't plug into your college's sign on. The way you would do it if you wanted to limit it is it would be a web page that's hosted uh, inside your college's system. Uh, like the insider college's web properties, and you would have to be logged into some 
single sign-on system that your college might have in order to access the page. Or you could give your students a key, for example, that they would need to enter in order to get to the registration page is a much simpler thing. Yeah, so Duncan says, so like dual mobile then, which I think is what it would be like, Duncan, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And maybe inside your LMS, um, yep. inside the a course in your LMS or something. Great question. Thank you, Duncan. Yeah, and I think Corn's right too. It could be in a Google Doc. It could be wherever you need it to be. Yep. Right. Um, oh, it needs to be a web page. Okay, sorry. So uh, there was a comment from Shiloh um, specifically talking about our infamous voice griefer from last year who seems to have disappeared, and I'm just going to um, post that forward. Because I know there's been some steps taken by Linden Lab about dealing with it, but Shiloh asked, so there happens to be an issue with a specific griefer that steals the voice stream, amongst other things. This person is egregiously offensive, using racist terminology, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, we know him. We know him. <laughs> yeah, maybe you, can, maybe you can explain how that has been. So we've, we've worked with... Um, our voice service provider, um, which is a third party provider, make sure that we can kick out voice griefers uh, almost immediately. I don't want to speak out of turn because I'm not on the governance team, uh, but I'm pretty sure that uh, these issues can be addressed much more quickly now. And again, um, if you do lock down access to where your um, uh, your uh, classes are taking place, for example, then you should be able to lock down the access to the voice stream as well. Excellent. That's That was key because we think they weren't here at some times, but they were able to get voice through. So that's very important as well. Thank you. Yeah, we should, we should be able to address this much faster now. But again, I highly recommend the governance user group. Wrote that down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Can can we move on, or are you guys feel uncomfortable? It's very helpful, guys. Our next tough one, but essential, is accessibility. It isn't just for students who have disabilities, though we are required to accommodate them. It is the law, and we want to. I'm sure you understand. It is also for students who are second language learners. So. Can you address accessibility, please, and improvements? It is indeed a tough one. And um, uh, <laughs> a gentle heron has been um, a wonderful but persistent um, at reminding me um, that um, we need to do better at addressing accessibility needs. Uh, the good news is uh, we've spent the last uh, year and a half kind of um, on a slow, slow progress on feature development because we were so focused on uplift and moving our infrastructure into the crowd. Um, but uh, into the cloud, sorry, the cloud doing its job. Um, but uh, now we're actually in a better place to, again, uh, review more of our feature infrastructure and see what we can do, uh, take a look at the new tools that exist. Um, and um, we kind of have to rely on third-party tools and figure out the best ways to integrate them into Second Life. Um, our past attempts at rolling our own have led to um, kind of these things um, languishing a bit and not getting the attention. Uh, the most successful way to address these things is to find third-party tools and figure out how to integrate them and maintain that integration uh, while the third party actually maintains the tool. Um, so I don't have a definitive roadmap, um, but I am in a much better place to consider what to do next. And I look forward it would be great, actually, if um, uh, 
we could uh, either work with Midori or you can um, contact me directly with ideas for how we can improve accessibility. I just want to make a comment here that um, I've worked in accessibility issues for close to two decades. We're going on three. And uh, it's, it's scary when you think about it that long. But one of the things that I fought so hard with with my, with my college and with various campuses was to get people to use that lens first. And they were planning change, thinking about doing something different. And um, I guess that's part of what Gentle has done all along is to say, think about this first, like when, you, when you're implementing a new change, think about what the implications are going to be. And we make accessibility one of the key points that we think about, right? Thank you. Absolutely. Such a good point, LB, and I, I do think that you can count on us staying on this issue. Uh, but we appreciate that you're open and you're trying. Um, and we, I think it just helps us hear that. Uh, hopefully we'll have progress um, sooner than later. Someone mentioned to me that Zoom was terrible when COVID hit uh, with accessibility and everybody was running to Zoom and um, it rallied quickly because they knew they had to. And so there are, there are things out there, I'm sure, and we, and we wish you the best in finding them for sure. <laughs> Thank you for not forgetting that piece because it is a big piece of education and, and we want our students to have access or we can't bring them here. Absolutely. Anyone else? And I, I also want to mention that uh, in working on Second Life, we keep in mind uh, that uh, there are so many different people to whom Second Life is valuable and who use Second Life in very different ways. Um, and we kind of try to keep it front of mind that there are many different communities uh, with many uh, both possibilities and limitations in how they're able to use Second Life. We try to make sure that uh, We just lost you. Okay, there's a comment from iSky that it isn't just students who need the accessibility. Um, she came into Second Life just as voice was coming into the grid. And in her first two weeks in Second Life, not one person communicated to her in text. And she later learned that voice was a big thing and everybody was talking, but Ice guy's deaf and she didn't hear them. So it was a big problem. So we just need to be mindful of these. Once we turn that lens on, I think we get it. And then Marley made a point about um, that sometimes people who have mental illness may be mistaken for griefers. To be aware of that when we're dealing with them. A oh, good point, Marley. And yes, thank you, Grumpy and iSky. Um, it, it actually is not just education um, that, that you're dealing with as far as accessibility is concerned, for sure. Um, but it is part of our part of our life. Mikey has a question from the live stream by Edgar. He asks, um, "What is the difference?" from the former architecture to the new in the cloud, uh, will the cost be reduced for universities to maintain full land? I think that will come up later, Edgar, and we'll, we'll get to it, okay? We haven't lost it. Thank you, Edgar. <clears throat> so I'm just waiting to make sure we have covered everybody. We can move I think on. So. Okay, good. We can move on to our third question, which is, you have spoken about the new onboarding areas and approaches. Um, would you like to speak more to that and more specifically uh, to that from an education point of view? So what can we expect? You, you touched on it a little bit. Um, 
and what, uh, because I think you have a new gateway and a new onboarding as well, right? Um, we do not have a, uh, not as a community gateway, uh, what I spoke, sorry, <laughs> let me start over. Uh, what I spoke about yesterday was not as a community gateway. However, I hear word that there's also a new community gateway starting out. Um, and we do work with community gateways um, and uh, try to support them uh, and uh, uh, see how um, see how they perform and try to uh, show them what we know about onboarding and learn from their success. Well, um, we are working on a new onboarding experience. It's not quite ready yet. Um, What's really guided us is a desire to have um, uh, both a cleaned up and more modern look, but more importantly, uh, we try to figure out what it is that uh, people need to be successful in Second Life. Uh, and um, there was a, a happiness map that kind of says, you know, for example, in order to be successful, people need to be able to communicate. Um, but not just uh, type hello and chat. Uh, what is kind of the the general uh, cultural common way to start a conversation? Hey, would you like to compliment somebody's avatar, for example? Um, how do you approach people? How do you find out about people? Um, so teaching them not necessarily that you move with the arrow keys. Everybody's going to figure that out. Uh, but teaching them the hard things that people actually need to be successful. Um, also looking at a um, feature set that might be um, most useful, uh, a bit of a cleanup of the viewer UI to highlight the things that are uh, most necessary um, and make them more logical. Uh, I mean, our ultimate whole hope is to reduce the number of ways to do things so that Second Life doesn't seem so overwhelmingly difficult when people start out. Um, also, uh, shortening the, the learning path to customize. Today, it is endlessly entertaining and also nearly endlessly complicated. So, So you're speaking our language, actually, because that is exactly what our um, our education educational approaches are all about: is keeping things as simple as possible so people can get deeper and enjoy more and learn more. We completely understand that. I do have to say that every educational community I'm at, the first thing that's talked about whenever there are challenges is onboarding. So it takes so long, and I think I know lots of educators who have tried things and made it more simple. But um, so I, I believe I heard you talk about new Abbeys or ahead um, in a couple of different mm -hmm. ways. I heard you say. Mm -hmm. uh, there's um, there are new starter avatars in the works. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them as much as you. <laughs> Probably more, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Carl Metropolitan asked a question about is Linden Lab restarting the Community Gateway program? Yet again, he says, but Carl was, uh, had, when I first started in Second Life, Carl had some wonderful features and spaces for new people. Actually, we've had uh, restarted the Community Gateways program uh, some time ago. Uh, I'm looking for that wiki page right now. Um, we've got several. Thank you. Here it is. Um, and uh, we are thrilled to work with you to get new ones. Uh, I mean, we really want you to bring the people you can reach into Second Life. That's fantastic, right? That's my pie in the sky. Um, 
nothing, you know, really leads to success quite as much as having somebody show you the ropes and uh, having somebody to talk to and know. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Gateways program exists. And um, if you're getting, please reach out to that team. Thank you. Willardy actually had uh, just sent me a, a question by private chat and said, you know, it would be great if there were some up-to-date videos on how to do many of the things in Second Life, like make friends or visit communities or look at things, right? So I know I know the young people in my life, the ones that are playing Minecraft and the ones that are playing other games, they, they watch videos endlessly about learning how to do that. It would be great. Yeah, I can answer that one. I fully agree. Uh, it's been a little over a year since our last refresh, which Strawberry did a series of New Year's or tutorials, which we, interestingly enough, for the first time ever, uh, in multiple languages, uh, had translated. We actually had different narrators and uh, translations. Uh, so those are on our YouTube channel. They're still pretty current, but we will be doing yet another refresh pretty much on a cycle of every, I don't know, one and a half to two years. So we're pretty much due to another one. But it had been a while until uh, prior to that last refresh. Um, in fact, I think we had Orly's uh, tutorials going back. I don't know, I'm embarrassed to say it. It had been too long. So yeah, but right now there are, uh, I don't know, maybe seven or eight of them that are that are uh, within the last year and a half or so uh, in multiple languages. But yeah, we can always do more. If you guys think there's a particular one or focus that we should try to um, prioritize, um, then we can get that on the uh, development schedule. Writing that down. Thank you. Actually used um, strawberries right after she made them with my class, and I at the time I was I was thinking of a few. So educators out there, keep a list. Let's let's get them uh, some ideas. Thank you. Nelby, I bet there's some things been happening in chat. No, I think actually for this topic, I think we're good. Oh, there was one. Sorry, I, I'm wrong. Um, there Actually, there's two. Uh, Peggy asked, or Linda asked from the live stream, is there an effort to create a browser-capable grid to flatten the learning curve? And for our students, that may come up later. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and, and talk about sure. it now. Okay, there we go. Hi. Um, we uh, kind of hinted around this uh, yesterday as well. Um, we are working on uh, a possible partnership uh, that would allow us to have a streaming solution um, for all of Second Life. Um, and uh, we're not quite at a point where we can go into a lot of details, uh, but the answer is yes. Uh, there is an effort, and we sure would love to talk about it soon. Yeah, I'll add something, too. This area has uh, advanced quite a bit, even in the last calendar year, the meaning that there are several announced and unannounced companies in this space. Um, so, yeah, we're in dialogues, but again, nothing to announce yet. Great to hear it's coming, and this would, this would address the Chromebook issues, I believe, that K-12 is really running into. We absolutely would love to and recognize the need to uh, be on Chromebook, um, without a doubt, especially in the education sector. Um, yeah, I would want to characterize, just to be accurate, we don't have anything to announce, but obviously we're looking at it, and in dialogues, our fingers are crossed that the deals, the deal can get in a place where we can see something sooner than later, but uh, stay tuned. And there's a question about mobile devices specifically in the chat. Um, the nature of Second Life is such that a mobile experience is going to be less than ideal um, on a on a phone uh, on a tablet. 
uh, you can really approach it. Uh, but ultimately, as we just talked, you really need a keyboard and mouse to navigate in Second Life quickly and and successfully. So adapting to a tablet is um, the next step and a little bit harder. Um, really having a full-fledged Second Life experience on a phone is a little tough, uh, but it's not um, that we're not exploring it. Uh, we'd love to do it. Excellent. And it's... I love the term mobile because um, I, you pointed out something really important. So there's a difference between a tablet and a phone, and students can learn a lot from a tablet and often only have a tablet where it's not quite the same. We deal with the same thing. You know, Are we going to let them take tests on phones? I'm sure we are like crazy now. Um, but thank you, for, thank you for making that point. And there was one more, right, LB? <laughs> yeah, I do actually have one more that I think is relevant here. I'm trying to sort them as they come in. Um, and this one is about, um, uh, Didi asks, have you considered allowing images to be added to note cards? And I clumped that with this onboarding because it will also mean that um, you can create better tools to help educate your students. Um, I ah okay. Gentle says she shared with Didi how to do that. Done. <laughs> Thank you, Gentle. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our fourth question. You guys are doing good so far, <laughs> and we have a lot of good input from the audience. Thank you. Um, so, marketing has been discussed a good amount. How can educators partner with you for more of that for education? We want our colleagues to join us, and I didn't jump in when you said that earlier, Grumpity, but we are with you. We want to bring people in. Um, we know how students could benefit from that. How can we work together to improve marketing for education? That's probably directed to me. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, straight up, the first thing I will say is uh, I would invite anyone with ideas, feedback, uh, comments, criticism, praise, or any or all of the above to contact uh, our marketing team. It goes to me and many of my colleagues at editor at lindenlab.com. Just the word editor at lindenlab.com excuse me, editor at lindenlab.com. So that's a great immediate way that people can reach out to us. Uh, I'm also happy uh, to, uh, as long as it scales well, depending on how many people reach out, but to meet and chat in world as well. I've done, been doing lots of sort of spot meetings uh, with folks as I meet more of the you know people in the various uh, communities. Uh, so I'm happy to do that too, um, as long as I can, as, as long as I have the bandwidth to do so, but I want to do that. Um, but what I'll say is we're really open to ideas. There's a lot going on right now in marketing. We are gearing up uh, this year in particular for uh, a new campaign, a uh, general consumer campaign, uh, to sort of reinvigorate the brand. We've already sort of started to roll out some pieces of that, uh, minor things like just a, an adjustment on the logo, uh, things that uh, ramp up social media, influencer partnerships, uh, some more earned media or media outreach efforts. So specific to the educator community, one area of immediate opportunity is we have, uh, oftentimes we get contacted by the media and or we proactively pitch stories about Second Life and its communities and all the phenomena. And so I would really love uh, examples that are worthy of sharing of successes, novel uses of Second Life, anything that's, uh, you know, uh, I guess newsworthy or feature newsworthy uh, in the education community. Because when I am aware of that, I can use that as I do these pitches and also speak uh, to the, the journalists and sometimes point people uh, that come to us, the, the journalists, to, you know, the various uh, community members so that they can follow up. 
So we're looking at trying to leverage these stories and these wonderful experiences that are, you know, organically happening and making sure that the media are aware of them. Particularly in the last year, we've had, uh, frankly, more media coverage than I've had uh, in my role here. You know, uh, it, you know, I've been at Second Life for a long time. But the last year, we have had more media coverage than at least in the last decade. Uh, and that's, frankly, because to a great degree, due to the pandemic and a recognition and maybe a rediscovery of Second Life in terms of what it has contributed you know, to the idea of you know, a virtual world, being, being early on the idea of concepts of virtual societies and virtual land and virtual economies and virtual world education. Obviously, and, and hearing many of the other sessions here, there's a lot of uh, evolution. You know, Second Life's not the only player in the space, clearly, but we were certainly one of the earliest. Uh, and so there's a recognition and, frankly, a reappreciation for some of the things that maybe some folks viewed were, was ahead of its time. So to go back to the question, uh, yes, please reach out to us, editor at lindenlab.com. And uh, in particular, we're looking for examples that we can use when we talk to the media to really shed light on it. Above and beyond that, we've got a, a bunch of um, promotional levers that we can pull to draw attention uh, to what you're doing. Things like the destination guide. If you're not in there or if you're in there with an old picture or an old description, contact us at that same email. We'll update it. Uh, we have LabGab, which is essentially a virtual world talk show almost every week. Um, and so we'd love to feature some education examples there. Um, I'm, there's probably more I'm not thinking of, but those are some immediate ones uh, of ways we can collaborate. But we definitely want to celebrate uh, and promote what's going on in, in Second Life in the education community. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm certain we have many great examples. Thank you. And, and we need to get on that to get those to you. Um, and I believe you talked about the education, the list of education entities uh, page. We would use the editor at for that as well. Yeah, it, uh, in our destination guide, we have a uh, education and nonprofits category right. where it's essentially a directory. And it's just a curated list. By no means is it comprehensive. And candidly, there's probably a lot of a lot, probably folks in this room who should be on there with their their uh, entities and their efforts that are not on there. So if it's missing, please let us know and we'll add it. Um, and we want to update it too, so we can we can update an existing entry at any time. Editor at lindenlab.com. Just shoot us an email and we'll gladly update it or add you. I think this belongs here. Um, this is a comment from Agile Bill Firehawk. And I'm just going to pop that in there. Um, about keeping professional and entertainment community experiences separate at times. And um, so as adult students don't stumble into the wrong adult classes uh, and uh, by a profile snooping or marketplace, for example. Well, good, but, you know, we just... Sometimes it gets tricky when we cross streams. Great point, Angel. And if I could just make a point too, uh, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn Carolon is our transcriptionist. Please do not um, send messages to her. She is working. Thank you. Excellent. Well, if we've covered everyone, this kind of segues into this question. Um, and that is um, cost. And so if you and you you guys have talked about it just a little bit, and I'm I'm sorry, this isn't on the list of questions. It was just something I was thinking about as we were talking about marketing. So we often have to convince our institutions to help uh, help us cover the cost of things, everybody but one person I know. Um, and um, I think that people will be reassured after we've had some flexibility and big changes in cost, and it's been a while we get that. Um, but are there, are there um, things that you could speak to about cost and education 
that would make us, would be helpful for us? Sure. Um, we had uh, some dark times uh, when the educational discount was taken away. Um, I uh, won't point any fingers or blame anyone in particular, but it certainly was uh, absolutely wrong and misguided to do so. And um, as soon as uh, we were able to bring about change, um, we did it. and. Uh, uh, the price for a full region for qualifying EDUs is uh, we have no intention it's not going to go up. Um, as a corollary to this, um, there was a narrative as we moved into the cloud um, that our cost would go down. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> how I wish this were true, uh, unfortunately it's not. Uh, what moving into the cloud allows us to do is to not spend money buying a lot of hardware um, and then 10 years from now buying a lot of hardware again. Uh, but it doesn't um, make the day-to-day -day operations cheaper necessarily. It allows us to focus on building a better second life instead of focusing on maintaining ser servers. Um, but our ongoing costs have not gone down. So as much as I wish I could say, oh, now we've moved into the cloud and um, you know all your regions are half price, uh, I'm, I know this is totally going to take it out as like a soundbite. Uh, we can't um, because uh, moving into the cloud has enabled us to do a lot of awesome things. Uh, it hasn't cut our bill in half. Great, great. We appreciate that. So uh, we are at five minutes. I want to get our last question in um, and make sure we have plenty of time to talk about it. Um, but we can revisit that if people are interested. Uh, you've been kind to say, get in touch with us. We've heard that all three times and we very much appreciate it. Outside of um, editor at Linden Labs, um, how does an educational community do that? Have you considered having an educational liaison? How do we get help? Who do we contact for sure? Right, who do we contact? So you, the sacrificial that. Linden is Midori. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, she is wonderful. Uh, you should absolutely reach out to her. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we were actually just recently talking internally uh, that a Discord channel for educators, uh, both in terms of uh, having a place to talk to each other, but also to kind of coalesce feedback for us, uh, is something that uh, we do. Um, seems, uh, I hope uh, there's interest in that, uh, and uh, if so, um, I think, uh, again, Midori would channel this information to us. Um, we, If it's helpful, we could talk about having an educator user group. Um, I don't know whether that format is right, uh, but we're totally open to suggestions for how to talk to the community as a whole, as well as talk to individual educators. Excellent. He shows you what I know. <laughs> well, and a lot of us use Discord, but a lot of us don't. Um, I think that there would be really excited people with Discord, and we can teach our colleagues. I'm not trying to say that's a that's a barrier. Um, I agree. Having an educator group is a really good idea, especially one that's connected to London Labs. Um, some things that were directed to me and and hit home closely are how our educators are up in the middle of the night getting their classes ready and then they run into something. So how to's, the videos that we were talking about earlier, the knowledge base is extensive and somewhat old. Um, things need to be easy to find. Searching is a challenge often. Um, 
we just ran into adding people to groups was a challenge as well. So, um, you know, that being able to liaison with you guys to get that, that information there and getting these um, to be tools and helps for us would be very important. More than a challenge, yeah. I think Agreed. we're getting some chat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's great. And there was um, there were other questions that came in, and I apologize that we didn't get to them. Um, they weren't particularly uh, on task, but there's two that I think just to draw your attention to. Holger asked about uh, fixing the voice issues so that we can follow any person when they speak. So I get it's about the directionality of voice. That has been glitchy. And another one was from the live stream from Edgar about uh, about uh, you know when we we were talked yesterday about some of the integrated apps. Would it be great we could integrate with a, an LMS and talked about Sloodle or the old tool we often used to use? How do we move that forward? Who do we talk to? Um, did I mention our sacrificial Lyndon Midori? <laughs> um, I think uh, Midori is the starting place for that conversation. Um, she is wonderful and super helpful, and so uh, I'd say you should start with her, um, and then uh, she will be able to uh, bring that feedback to us, uh, and we'll talk about how this could be done. Um, and then going back, see, I can't hold. Um, the directionality of voice. Thank you, Carolyn, for transcribing what would I do. Uh, the directionality of voice uh, issue, I share your frustration. We have our work meetings in World, and so we see the problems you see. Um, and uh, we're working on it. Interestingly, we face different problems than a game, for example, would, uh, because if you were talking about a game, uh, voice support just moves with the releases, right? You release a new version, and then it's on a new voice codec, uh, and everybody's using it. In Second Life, if you want to put in a new voice system or a new version, you need everybody to be on that version, and getting everybody on the same version of anything little rough. So uh, we're well aware of the issues that exist and uh, I am motivated to fix them. Thank you. Awesome. Um, we are running out of time. It has been a delight. Is there anything else you'd like to say to us before we move to our next session? Uh, I'll just say thank you for inviting us uh, very generously to uh, this and other sessions. Uh, and again, having attended a few of these, uh, very impressed with uh, just the diversity of topics that you guys have covered. Uh, there's a lot going on in this space uh, right now, and so we really appreciate that uh, you guys uh, are still with Second Life and uh, being patient with us. We are taking notes of the features that you guys have brought up. I know Midori is going to be uh, coming in on Monday to a very full inbox, uh, which I think is a good thing. Um, but thank you. Really appreciate you having us here. Well, thank you guys so very much. And I, I'm going to echo Chantal. It feels good to hear, and several others. It feels good to have you guys interested in education, uh, and we so appreciate um, this great relationship that's moving forward. We appreciate you guys being here all three days. We look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. You'll be hearing here, from here. us. <laughs> Thank you so much. It, it's been a pleasure, and I do look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, audience. Still more at BWBPE.
All right, I'm going to log out. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks, Ellie. Thanks for being here, Brett. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bravo. Thank you.